happy to be introducing Lucy Shinaka today. Uh, as the Director of Loyalty and Consumer Insight at Harlequin, Lucy has 18 years of experience launching new product lines for the direct-to-home branch of Harlequin while developing customer management relationship strategies and providing insightful consumer data to influence future business decisions. She's here today to tell you about Harlequin's My Rewards program and what the team has learned after their first year of, of building brand ambassadors. Please welcome Lucy. So uh, our first Harlequin was published in Winnipeg in 1949. So we've been publishing uh, romances for the past 67 years. And over the years, we started out with one product line, and we've continually added more and more different romance series. And a romance series, uh, for those who don't know, is basically uh, a genre of romance, such as paranormal or medicals. And every month, we publish about four to six titles in each of those series. And to date, we have over 17 different romance series, each publishing anywhere from four to six titles uh, per month. And we've are also publishing more than just romance these days. We also publish uh, suspense, psychological thrillers, um, uh, paranormal, and even young adult books. Uh, we have, we publish over 110 titles a month. And we've, in the past 67 years, we've sold over six billion books. And a Harlequin book is sold every three seconds. So that's, that's a lot of books. So, I want to talk a little bit about who our Harlequin reader is. She has traditional values and surprise, there's no surprise really, is she believes in happy endings. She focuses on her family, faith, and community. And uh, she's optimistic and helpful to a fault. And so helpful that she even has an occupation that is community oriented, such as nursing or teaching. She even rescues animals for pets, takes in stray pets, she even takes uh, in people who uh, need help or don't have somewhere to live. She'll even take in people to, to help them, give them a boost, and get them going again. Um, and the mean uh, age is about 47. And um, the reason why she reads Harlequin is because she needs, she is optimistic. She believes in a positive world. And of course, our world sometimes is not so positive, and she needs to feel that Thing, good things can happen. So she needs that happy hit. And that's what Harlequin has become to her. It has become that happy hit. And so she relies on us when over these years to consistently provide that happy uh, addiction that she's, she's grown to have. And for that reason, uh, she reads about two, on average, 2.3 books each month. And that's significantly higher than what uh, the general population reads. So this is a great number for us, and we want to make sure that she continues reading that much, and if not more. So we know that loyalty programs uh, improve customer retention and customer spending. We know through the statistics that reward programs are 70% more likely uh, to be uh, word of mouth champions, and consumers spend about 46% more with companies that have a loyalty program. And consistently across the board, no matter what industry, uh, the loyalty program is in, they consistently achieve a lift of 5 to 10 percent in customer spending and retention. So for these reasons, we thought it was time to develop a loyalty program for Harlequin, and that's how Harlequin My Rewards was born. Our job if with Harlequin My Rewards is to make sure we keep our customers shopping wherever she prefers to shop. It's, we want to keep her shopping wherever she likes to go. And we want to make sure that she's keeping that 2.3 average, if not more. And we like the more part, of course. So we want to encourage her to buy more, again, wherever she prefers to shop. And we want to help her find her new Harlequin book, again, wherever she prefers to shop. And of course, we want to leverage the program to acquire new readers in the future. So when we developed uh, this program, it was very important to us that we took a very customer-centric approach. It wasn't important what we wanted to achieve. What was important is that we serviced her needs. And we uh, took every decision through the process from strategy building to program features to what kind of tech requirements we were going to need and even the design of the site, and we kept her needs in mind. So we did a lot of research. And one of the things that we did was uh, customer journey mapping, where we um, 
really deeply understood what her experience was with our product and with reading in general. From the first time she thinks she wants to read a book all the way through her experience when she's reading it, when she's searching for it, and what she does with the book and her experience after she's finished reading the book. And we wanted to understand what were her pain points at each stage. And more importantly, how can we properly address them so that we can provide her with the right solutions. And we wanted to make sure that the loyalty program provided those right solutions along the way. So one of the first things that we heard through the research was, um, I want to be adventurous in my reading, but I don't want to waste my time. So she's busy with her family and you know, rescuing pets and, and helping anybody else in the community. She doesn't have a lot of time to, to invest in something that's very important in her life, her reading time. And she wants to make sure that her expectations are met. So when she sees a great cover and she thinks it looks like a suspense cover, it's really disappointing to her that when she starts reading it, it turns out to be not so suspensey. And so uh, we wanted to make sure that through the program, we provided her with the right book to read when she was ready to read. And that's why we uh, provide, one of the main benefits of the program is providing personalized book recommendations. So there's a, a part on the platform that uh, is called our reader profile. And she answers questions about her reading preferences. Uh, questions such as her sensuality preference level. Um, you know, uh, what kind of genre she likes. And uh, so what kind of storylines does she like? Does she want uh, marriage of convenience? Does she want a kidnap story? Does she want a confinement story? What kind of storyline uh, does she prefer most? And of course, which kind of hero does she prefer? Does she want a cowboy, a military, a firefighter, a martial artist? What is, she, you know, her taste of the day? And we also wanted to make sure that we're using the purchase data that we're collecting uh, to understand what her preferences are and using that reader profile and her purchase data, we provide a one-to-one -one, uh, personalized book recommendations. So what we recommend every month to Sally is going to be different to what we uh, recommend to Mary because it's all based on her personalized preferences. And that it was very important for us that we understood what her preferences are. And she can change her reading profile at any given point so if she doesn't like cowboys tomorrow and she wants to change it to mili military heroes because her tastes change and evolve, then that's important to us to note and we want to make sure that we're being relevant to her as her, uh, she continues in her reading life. One of the other things uh, we learned from research is that she buys her Harlequins wherever she can. So she buys them in the grocery store, she buys them in the pharmacy, she buys them online, uh, she buys them on her device. Um, she buys them in bookstores, obviously. So we wanted to make sure that we can reward her uh, for her purchases no matter where she shops. So it was very important for us to find an easy mechanism for her to tell us, you know, where are you buying and let's give you points for that purchase. So um, we found a partner that uh, does receipt scanning for us. So when uh, a person buys a book, when she buys a book at, uh, you know, Barnes & Noble or Walmart, she simply takes a picture of her receipt and then she emails that image to a particular email address or she can directly upload it on the site. And she automatically receives points for her purchase. Um, if she orders on Amazon or any other online site or she orders directly from her reading device, she very easily just forwards that email confirmation she gets for her purchase and forwards that to, again, a particular email address, and she automatically gets points for her purchase. We also hear through the research that, of course, um, because she takes on so much and she's always trying to help everyone and she puts herself at the end of the list, is she's obviously leading a very busy life. And so she has barely any time to um, you know, make sure that uh, her reading life is being taken care of. So it was very important for us to be very mobile responsive so that she could upload her receipts at any given time, whenever she wants, whenever she has a few minutes. And we, she can also participate in any earning activity wherever she was on the go. And it also would allow her to redeem rewards wherever she is. We also heard through research, uh, and again, this would, is not surprising to us because she's very highly engaged with our product. She follows 
our authors, she knows when, uh, when the next book is coming out, but because she's such a voracious reader, she, she has this hunger to know more, and she really enjoys learning more about her authors or about her favorite series or anything else that's new and coming um, in the new world of romance. And so what we developed was uh, what we call book challenges. So every week on the site, we, um, a member can get points for watching a book trailer, um, watching an interview with an author, um, or reading an excerpt of an upcoming book, or listening to a particular uh, s snapshot of a book, and um, it's even answering uh, trivia, author trivia about, you know, uh, something new about an author or reading an article about an author and what her latest inspiration is. And it's been very interesting to watch these book challenges because it has become her favorite thing uh, to earn points on. And she comes every week and she uh, makes sure that a challenge is up and that she's, um, you know, um, doing something um, that, that gives her more insights into what's going on in uh, her particular interests. Um, it's become so popular that we now do it twice a week. And we're even uh, considering it, um, making it daily uh, because it's such a, uh, an avid activity that she takes part in. So how did we make this happen? What was the magic? Well, um, we first had to find a partner that had a point system and could ingest all of the receipts for us and process them. We didn't have that ability, and we, did, we knew that that would require a lot of resources, both time, people, and money, and that we knew that there were a couple of partners out there that we could partner with. So um, the other piece is that we wanted um, the Harlequin My Rewards to be a part of our harlequin.com site. Um, harlequin.com is used a lot by our readers. A lot of our readers come to, to the site to see what else is uh, new and available. And um, it also houses our e-commerce site where members or customers can buy books directly from us. So we want to make sure that that piece was integrated. So um, with our partner, we, um, what happens is when a member joins, um, a message is sent to uh, our partner's uh, back-end system saying, hey, Sally wants to join the program and then um, a message is sent back saying, well, let her in. And so basically through these series of API calls and uh, data imports, um, the members can earn activities seamlessly without um, any interruption. So it doesn't she have to wait for days to get her points for that particular activity or days for that particular purchase. It happens pretty instantly. And it's very seamless to the, to the reader. Uh, it was also required a lot of data import on our partner side. Um, obviously, we had a lot of ISBNs to upload into their system so that they could identify uh, on her receipt which one was the Harlequin book. And obviously, we continue to publish 110 p titles a month, so we made, had to make sure that the partner was able to ingest all of these newest ISBNs every month. So our Needless to say, a lot of coordination and communication was needed between our IT team, our web development team, and our partner. And um, so we relied on our Gantt chart. Our Gantt chart became our most important tool. It told us not only uh, what tasks were being taken by whom and when they were gonna be done, but it also helped us identify which tasks could overlap so that you, know, you didn't need to wait for task B to start because task A had to finish. And that was really important to us because we had, we didn't want the development process to be too long. Uh, we wanted to be quick with this program and able to launch it and test it and then launch it to the world very quickly. And uh, this Gantt chart was very important, communicating, coordinating everybody's efforts and keeping um, in tune with what needed to happen when and uh, getting the process done effectively and quickly. So um, I wanna share with you a little bit uh, on some of the lessons we've learned um, in both bringing this uh, to the world and also um, in some of the results that we've gained so far. So like and anything um, that when you start out, you always think, oh yeah, you do this and you do that and it's really easy, you just plug this in, plug that in and it all works. Um, and of course, it, it never really works that way. 
um, there's always more work involved and there was a lot of heavy lifting needed from our IT team and um, we needed more hands on deck. So um, it was a lot more work uh, than we initially thought. And of course, a lot of testing was required. When we first developed the uh, receipt scanning, it was fairly new. So this was, we're talking in 2014, in the fall of 2014, and receipt scanning um, had just started. It was barely a year old. And when you're dealing with a technology that was, is very cutting edge, yes, you have to test, but we really wanted to make sure that everything was working seamlessly, was going to be working seamlessly for the customer, and that we provided an optimal customer experience and uh, that it didn't develop into another pain point because that's the last thing you'd want from a loyalty program, but that it was easy to use and not onerous. And so it required a lot of testing uh, back and forth and really delving into what type of scenarios could be possible. And it, it actually involved about two months work of on and on going testing. And um, it was proved to be um, a very good experience even though it was painful for us during the testing point because it really did provide that optimal customer experience when we did launch it to our test group. And needless to say, of course, whenever you're doing something that's uh, you know, involving a lot of people inside and outside your, your company, it's really important um, to make sure that your, all the details are being recorded. Um, you can't just say it, you have to write it down, especially when there's a lot of coordination happening. And it's amazing what gets quickly forgotten when you just um, had a meeting or a discussion about it and then you go away and, well, you think it's happening and it's not. So um, details, details, record them all. Really crucial point. So what's next for Harlequin My Rewards? Uh, well, like any story, um, it continues. And uh, one thing that we want to uh, develop is, um, since we're collecting all of this purchase data, we can see our, sh you know, all the books that she's purchased. And we want to give her her own little bookshelf um, so that she can see all the books she's purchasing because she's buying books uh, at the store and she's buying them online. And one of the things with buying ebooks is that you can't really see all of your purchases in one area, especially if she's cross-channel shopping. So we want to give her that ability to see that her, her you know, um, virtual bookshelf and be able to categorize books according to her own terms, rate them, review them, and share her favorite reads with uh, her, her friends. Um, and so that's something that we'll be developing very soon. And of course, uh, needless to say, um, it's very important to us to make sure that we're harnessing the data that we're collecting and making sure that we're continuing to provide her with a relevant, meaningful experiences on a one-to-one -one level and making sure that we're using that knowledge that we're gaining, that data that's coming in to um, leverage uh, key business decisions for us in the future. So making better uh, marketing and editorial decisions um, in the future. So um, I just want to see if anybody had any questions about uh, the rewards program or um, anything at all about Harlequin or loyalty. Um, you have to, um, anybody can become a member, but we're only, uh, unfortunately with the receipt scanning, we're only able to read receipts from uh, the US or Canada. So you can, you can definitely do the book, so somebody in Germany can definitely join the program and, and do the book challenges, but her, her, her earning potential is going to be limited versus somebody who lives in the U.S. What's the percentage of conversion for the books that you're featuring? So how much are they buying? Uh, so the books that we feature in the challenges? For the incentives, yeah. Oh, for the incentives. Uh, the, the challenges, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, it could be any... Any, uh, anywhere. Um, it can go anywhere from 10% to 25% uh, conversion. And um, what we've seen is that the higher the caliber of the author, the more well-known she is, then the more likely that, that that's going to be more of an attractive draw. Uh, what sort of staff uh, resources have you allocated to harnessing and mining all this massive data that you're accumulating? Yeah, so we have um, one person right now dedicated to um, the data analysis, but we're trying to leverage more of our internal resources, so more of our other analytics uh, staff members that we have. So um, it's more of a team effort. So, yep, we have one person dedicated, but we also have, we bring in um, other analysts from other um, 
groups to help us look at the data and uh, look for um, insights. And we also leverage our partner has some um, um, analytics expertise on their side. And yeah, so it's a lot of team resources. So using other teams whenever we can. Um, at the beginning, you mentioned that your reader is optimistic and helpful to a fault. And I was just curious, like how you got that kind of qualitative information, mm -hmm. like not just that they see themselves as optimistic and helpful, but the to a fault part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, a few years ago, we did an ethnographic research. And what that is, is where you um, shop along with them and then ask them if they would like to do an interview in home. So we had a researcher go into the uh, reader's home, and it was on average, uh, it was about a two hour interview, where you talk to them, um, not just about their um, books and what they buy and what they like, but really understood them as women and uh, their characteristics and their personality. And we were able to gain a really deep understanding of who they are psychographically.